Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where it's an incredibly cold day here at Hinokicho Park. Uh, we normally expect February to be a cold time of year but it's a little bit colder this year than uh, normal. We've had a lot of uh, cold weather records broken around Japan this year and I, I hear that the uh, situation is similar in other places. But as I mentioned in my last video the, the plum blossoms are starting to bloom here and of course we always take that as a sign of the, the change in seasons and we're hoping it gets warmer uh, soon. It's been a while since my last video, I apologize for that. Uh, the reason for the delay is my wife and I both got COVID, which was uh, not a, a wonderful experience. I didn't feel as bad as I did last time when I got it, but my wife was quite sick. Uh, we were uh, able to uh, notify the city that uh, we were both sick and uh, so they can keep, of course, the, the figures on uh, who gets sick and who recovers and all that. And the, the city was nice enough to send us, a, I guess, a, a couple of goodie boxes. And in these boxes, they included a bunch of uh, uh, you know, food, snacks, drinks, and things like that. Uh, and I was really surprised to receive these. And looking inside, it's pretty much everything you need to uh, sustain yourself for a week or so until you can get back on your feet. And I really have to thank the Minato Award here in Tokyo for being so kind. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started with the subject of today's video. And today I'm going to be talking about one of the more unique uh, rangefinder cameras out there. Uh, this one is one which probably very few of you have seen and, uh, uh, and, and for good reason, very few of these cameras were made. This happens to be the Ricolet 2 rangefinder camera, which was released by Ricoh in around 1955 or 1956. And it was kind of an evolution of the original Ricolet camera, which had uh, come out in 1953 or 1954. Uh, the Ricolet 2 features a, a few improvements to the design, more streamlined function, and a, a kind of a better overall camera. I guess that kind of depends on your opinion on, on what better is, but uh, having compared these two cameras, I actually prefer the Ricolet 2. Uh, I did a lot of research on this camera as much as I could before I made this video, and it was very difficult to find any information at all about the Ricolet 2. Uh, searching in English and Japanese produced pretty much uh, no information, and so uh, you know what I was able to find, I, I'll go ahead and repeat during this video. So they said this camera was, re was released in around 1955-1956, just before the, the Ricoh 35 series with the trigger winding system was released, and <clears throat> it's it's kind of a a really unique camera. It has kind of a, a, a combination of different features uh, which Ricoh uh, picked up from the various different manufacturers and they kind of mashed them all together in this camera with a few of their own, uh, I guess, touches. Uh, the first thing uh, about this camera is it's kind of odd uh, focusing wheel design. They put a focusing wheel on the front here to focus the camera, uh, very similar to the old uh, Zeiss Icon, Ikanta or Super Ikanta cameras. Uh, they they went completely their own way when they designed the viewfinder and rangefinder system and actually came up with a pretty good design which gives you a really good bright field of view and act, and a pretty good uh, uh, way to uh, uh, use the rangefinder to focus with but without the complexity in all the parts which were uh, put in more like uh, I guess the Leica copy uh, rangefinder cameras which were popular at this time and a little bit before. And uh, a few things which make this uh, superior to the ra uh, later uh, Ricoh Flex cameras, which are basically a more simple and rugged design. <clears throat> the more I looked at this camera, the more I was surprised at how much thought and engineering went into it. Especially when you consider that this camera was kind of just a, uh, a make-do, like, middle-run camera. Something which they, uh, they moved on from their earlier Ricolette design and just kind of put in the market until they had perfected their later Ricoh 35 rangefinder cameras. And uh, I actually think this is better than a lot of the later cameras which they produced. So I'll go ahead and describe the features, functions, and controls of this camera. Starting at the top here, we have, of course, the film rewind knob here. Uh, this is just a rewind knob. It doesn't extend or anything like that. You just have to turn it to rewind the film. We have a shoe for mounting a flash gun, or you can uh, mount a light meter. There are a lot of clip-on light meters which you can get nowadays, which you can adapt to these old cameras. If you're using a flash, the flash sync socket is right here. Uh, over on this side, we have this small cap screw in front of where my finger is right now. And if you remove this cap screw, underneath that you'll find the screw which you have to turn to adjust the vertical adjustment on the rangefinder. Luckily, this camera, it's a rangefinder design, and it's quite easy to make adjustments to it. Over here we have the shutter release button and it has this removable collar which you can remove by just simply unscrewing it to the left. And this allows you to use the uh, popular uh, 
a cable release system of the 1940s and 1950s, which kind of screwed down around the outside of the shutter button, whereas the more modern ones actually screw down on the inside of the button. These are a little bit hard to find nowadays, but they can still be found, uh, so that allows you to use a cable release on this camera. <coughs> We have this little button here on the back, and this is the release button, which allows you to rewind the film. And here we have a very uh, typical uh, film winding knob, very similar to the old rangefinder cameras like Leica's and things like that. And then it has the same film counter system, which you have to reset manually by simply turning uh, the film uh, counter dial, lining up the zero with the arrow here where my finger happens to be pointing after you load film into it. Uh, pretty basic stuff on the top. Uh, on the back here, you have the viewfinder eyepiece, and I mentioned that this uh, viewfinder was a kind of a different design than what you usually see in old rangefinder cameras. And what it has is it has a, a very simple uh, uh, and very bright viewfinder uh, system here on this side, and a rangefinder mirror over here. And instead of having like a, a large a split prism mirror or a prism on the inside to reflect uh, the rangefinder image, they simply put a small vertical reflector in the center and this allows more light to go through so the, the image is quite bright and it actually gives you a pretty uh, good, uh, uh, I guess, uh, split, uh, I guess what they call it, a pretty bright rangefinder patch for focusing. Uh, unfortunately on these cameras the focusing patch gets dim over time due to the deterioration of the reflective surface. And that was the situation with this camera. So what I ended up doing was cutting out a piece of uh, beam splitting mirror from an Aries camera and fitting it in. Uh, <clears throat> it's not quite as elegant as the original design, but it works really well. And uh, the rangefinder focusing patch is actually much brighter than it was before. Uh, moving to the bottom of the camera, uh, this is kind of similar to the Ricoh 35 cameras. You have to remove the film back by turning both of these locking knobs on the bottom. and uh, let's see, it's uh, to open and to uh, turn it the right way. And the film door pops off, very similar to the old Nikon SLR in rangefinder cameras. And here you can kind of see everything inside the back of the, the Ricolette. Uh, right here, where I'm pointing here, is another screw, a cap screw. You remove this screw, and deep inside underneath that is the, the screw where you adjust the horizontal adjustment for the rangefinder. It's quite easy to adjust here, but keep in mind that you need a really long screwdriver and you can kind of see inside where that screwdriver has to reach to make the rangefinder adjustment. Uh, loading the film is quite simple. You put your film cartridge here and push it up against the forks and the rewind knob and simply thread it across into the take-up spool. And then you can replace the top cover, lock the knobs and simply wind and shoot two or three times and once you have uh, got it locked then you reset the film counter to zero and the camera is ready to go. Uh, the front of the camera is where of course the important stuff is on this camera. This is a fixed lens uh, rangefinder camera so all the controls for the aperture and stuff are located in the lens itself. I've already pointed out the, uh, the focusing wheel here and this camera, like the old uh, Super Econtas and such, it does have an issue sometimes with uh, uh, sticky uh, focusing helicoid, which can make this a little bit hard to turn. If it is hard to turn, you can simply turn the front of the lens itself. That works just as well. As you look on the lens here, we have a, a focusing scale or distance scale engraved on the lens itself. And you can use this to uh, manually focus the lens without using the uh, uh, viewfinder. This is, this is handy for stuff like street shooting when you want to say shoot it with well, I guess hyperfocal distance. You can set it uh, at, at the appropriate distance and uh, set the aperture and shutter speed for light conditions and pretty much all you have to do is point the camera and shoot. You don't have to waste a lot of time focusing. Uh, <clears throat> behind the uh, uh, focusing scale is the depth of field scale and this tells you how much depth of field you have at any given aperture. Uh, behind that you have the shutter speed ring and this camera uses a similar shutter to the old Ricoh Flex uh, twin lens reflex cameras with the same range of shutter speeds from a uh, bulb in one tenth of a second to up to one two hundredth of a second. This is the uh, range of speeds you usually find on cameras like the, the Ricoh Flex Holiday or uh, the Ricoh Flex uh, 6 or 7 depending on which version because they all came with different shutters in them. Uh, behind that in the back you have the aperture ring and uh, we have the aperture scale written here and a 
uh, red dot which you use to line up the numbers and of course here we have the flash sync socket. Uh, we also have a quarter inch tripod socket, I forgot to mention that. It's off on the side which is often the case in these old cameras. Uh, my opinions on this camera are quite positive. I find this to be a very well made and rugged camera, incredibly simple. There's very little which can go wrong with this camera. When I took off the top cover to clean out the viewfinder, I was really su surprised at the design underneath, how clean and simple it was, and how uh, Rico went to the trouble to make sure that this would be a reliable and easy to service camera. Uh, there's not much on this camera which can go wrong that uh, a mechanically inclined person couldn't fix themselves. And I really like the design here of the focusing system and the overall all, all looks of the camera, which are quite unique. You don't see a lot of cameras with this appearance or design made in Japan back in the day. Uh, it's a fully mechanical camera. It doesn't require any batteries. You just have to put film in it. Uh, as I mentioned before, you can use a clip-on meter on the top here if you need to use a light meter. You can, of course, use a handheld light meter or a light meter app. Uh, this camera has a really good one, a lens, a 45mm f3.5 lens, which was carried over into some of the Ricoh 35 rangefinder cameras. It's a really good, simple, well-made, good-performing lens, and these cameras can take surprisingly good pictures. Anyway, as this is a very simple camera without a lot of information about it, I can't really talk too much about it other than to say I like it and I would recommend this to someone who likes Ricoh cameras or wants it, something which is uh, definitely not what everyone else happens to be out there shooting with. Uh, it, it's, it's a really interesting camera and, uh, and not an especially common one. I've only had a couple of these over the years. And the last one I had had a uh, seized focus helicoid. Luckily, this one is in much better condition. But anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, post this camera for sale uh, in my online stores. Uh, if you'd like to buy this Ricoh or another uh, vintage Japanese camera, please visit my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. Uh, as I always say, I plan to make more videos about uh, classic cameras. If you'd like to see these, please subscribe. Uh, this week I've received a whole lot of cameras which I haven't gotten listed yet, mainly because I, was, uh, I wasn't feeling well last week. So uh, over the next few days you can expect to see more things listed in my stores. Uh, if you like the button, uh, or like the video, not like the button, like the video, please click the like button and that'll help uh, bring other people here who uh, might be interested in these videos. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.